from News Channel 8, this is News Talk with Bruce DePoint. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Great to have you with us again today. Assuming Governor Larry Hogan signs the measure when it reaches his desk in Annapolis, there will soon be new rules of the road for Maryland residents convicted of driving under the influence. That's because the state Senate and the House of Delegates were able to reach agreement on Noah's Law just before the assembly adjourned at midnight. With us here in the studio to discuss this and other big bills, State lawmakers tackled this year. State Senator Jamie Raskin of Montgomery County, a Democrat. Also with us on the news line is Delegate Kathy Abzali of Frederick County, a Republican. Thank you both for being here. We appreciate your time. Senator Raskin, let me begin with you. Why did it take such a concerted push over such a long period of time from the public safety community in Maryland to get Noah's Law across the finish line? Well, with my friend, uh, Delegate Ben Kramer, I've been working on this for seven years. Um, and we now basically have the toughest anti-drunk driving law in America, uh, assuming Governor Hogan signs it, which he said he would. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we're going to compel all convicted drunk drivers and the vast majority of arrested drunk drivers to have the ignition interlock device installed in their car, which means the car won't start if there's alcohol in their breath. Because they... They've got to breathe into it, and, the, and it shuts the car down. The engine won't start if it detects alcohol in the breath. And it's very effective, and it's almost flawless. Um, and uh, in the places where it's been adopted, it's dramatically reduced drunk driving fatalities, and it's worked for us. We, we got it passed um, several years ago for repeat drunk drivers and the most extreme drunk drivers. Now we're including everybody. So let the message go out that if you drive drunk in Maryland, you're going to end up on the ignition interlock device. Delegate, Ab Delegate Abzali, weigh in on this. Uh, Senator Raskin talks about how this has worked in other places, uh, how the technology works. The technology is not new. It's been around a while. Curious to get your general reaction, but also, if you would, weigh in on why this took so long. Well, uh, th there's probably a few schools of thought on that, and, and, and not to get too political, but the, the issue has been very political for years, and I think part of it is the, the mentality, I believe, um, until the last couple of years, has largely been pro-criminal and anti-victim. And so I think what's happened in the last couple of years is, first of all, we've, we've, we've elected more, I think, very tough on crime Republicans. Um, so there's a, a new Republican on each committee in the House. And, um, and also we have a Republican governor who, who, um, who believes in, in these kinds of measures. And uh, just, just last year, um, I had a, a family in my district who contacted me, the Healy family up near Fairmont, Maryland, whose son had been killed by a drunk driver. And until you've sat across from a grieving family and seen a, uh, seen a mother and a father grieving over the, the, the senseless loss of a child um, because of someone's irresponsible behavior, you can't really fathom the, the, that kind of grief until you, you face it. Senator so Raskin. I, I applaud this measure. Um, I know let, that let me, a lot of law enforcement people have been wanting this for a long time. Senator Raskin, talk about the death of Montgomery County Police Officer Noah Leota and the role it played and the comments from uh, Officer Leota's father, Rich Leota, at a press conference that we and others carried live uh, as it happened. Uh, off, uh, Rich Leota calling out a senior member of the Maryland General Assembly, one of, yeah. your, when you, one of your colleagues by name, talk about that. Well, I mean, role the, of play. The, the involvement of the Leota family was the pivotal event that really tipped the scales in the struggle to get Noah's law passed. I mean, for one thing, we renamed the legislation after Noah Leota, uh, son of these wonderful parents, son of Montgomery County, born and raised here, went to Montgomery College, got out, joined the Montgomery County Police Department. Everyone who and, knew him loved him. It, just a totally gregarious, ebullient young man. Everybody loved him, very dynamic. Um, but he wanted to devote his life on the police force to stopping drunk driving and volunteered for the alcohol unit during the holiday period in December of 2015. And he was on detail. He pulled over a drunk driver, was returning to his car with the registration and license when another drunk driver comes along um, and extinguished his life and you know to their everlasting credit um, his mom and dad who had never really been involved in 
politics before in this way said we are not going to rest until we pass basically the toughest anti-drunk driving law in America and they were in Annapolis probably a dozen times and they were with us um, past midnight last night they came first thing in the morning and they were with us for probably 15 the, or 16 hours. The back and forth between the state senate and the house of delegates on competing versions of the same legislation took all 90 of the 90 days you guys met. It took most of the yes. last uh, hours of the last day. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this morning on our sister station, ABC7, on Good Morning Washington, Officer Ray Liotta's uh, father, Rich Liotta, uh, reacted to the passage of Noah's Law. This could not have happened without the service and the sacrifice of my hero's son, Noah Liotta. He's the one that made this happen. But ultimately, when Chief Manger got out in front of the station house and expressed the problem that existed in Maryland, that's what turned this effort into where we are today. That was the start. That's where everything began. It began with Noah and then went to the chief. We took it from there. We took it with the community, all the grassroots, family, friends, the media, the police department, all the men and women in blue, and all the first responders, MAD, all the other people that have lost their lives <coughs> to drunk drivers. All of that combined with two wonderful people, two people in Annapolis who've been fighting this for seven years, Ben Kramer and Jamie Raskin. Rich Liotta speaking there. Senator Raskin, is Delegate Afsali right? Has there, given that this is not new technology and the push to get this law in its current form, not for re just for repeat offenders, but for people convicted of a single DUI, the argument being that if you've been reckless, you've already proven that you're unfit to be behind the wheel and you owe society more than just, uh, and I'm sorry, or I'll do better next and time. So the technology isn't new, and the push to get this law approved is not new. Is Delegate Afzali right that the balancing of interests was too much in, front, in, in, in favor of, if you will, uh, criminals, people who engage in reckless disregard for others, and uh, not enough on, th on people who do the right thing? Um, I, you know, I think there's something to that, but I would. So what? So what? So I would view it in what a, is, So what is the something? The something to that is that, um, look, what happens in Annapolis is you get special interests uh, versus the common good versus the public interest. I mean, that's the way I see it. And the test is always, can you mobilize a broad enough part of the population to get engaged in politics so that you can take on the special moneyed interests? In this case, how about the, the, liquor. the defense attorneys who dominate the committee in the House where that bill was deadlocked for many years, they're not a special interest in yeah. the way we normally talk about our politics. But were they the problem? I think that, that was part of the issue. They're part of the solution, too, of course, because, you know, that's part of the perspective we want to have is looking at it from the standpoint of everybody involved. But it got tilted too much in that direction. But also, I have found ever since I arrived in Annapolis that big liquor has been opposed to every piece of anti-drunk driving legislation that I've put in. They simply don't want the message to go out. You don't drink and drive. They don't want anything that discourages people from drinking. Delegate Atzali, a quick comment from you before we get a break. Well, with all due respect to Senator Raskin, I, I, I disagree with that. I think that, that, that Big Liquor is not who was responsible. I think that trial lawyers who are elected officials who work in the General Assembly were the worst um, offenders of getting these bills uh, killed. And, you know, so kudos to Senator Raskin for getting this through, and, and, and kudos to, to Delegate Kramer, because I know how hard they work. But um, how many people in the last seven years of trying to get this kind of tough legislation through, how many people have died from, from drunk drivers and all because of politics? And I'm hoping um, going forward that it doesn't always take a grieving mother and father in somebody's face for, you know, days on end. God bless um, this family for their fortitude of making sure that they saw this to the end. But, but the good news is, is that when you put a face and a name and when you have a grieving family there, it makes it real to people who would otherwise be immune to 
to the to the hurt and to the loss of, of such a wonderful human being. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to play the blame game anymore. I think what we want to do today is we want to rejoice that we got the bill through, and um, it was really touching last night to, to see the family up in the balcony of the house. And um, it, it just really moved my heart to, to see them there. And and there's no more blame. We got the bill through. And going forward, let's hope we, we get more great legislation like this that, that promotes the good. And um, this bill did do that. Stand by, Delegate. Talking with Kathy Afsali and Jamie Raskin. A break here. Back with more News Talk after this.